Sun Tzu was known as a Chinese military strategist, philosopher, and general in the 6th century BC, who's widely recognized for his work, The Art of War, which is a treatise on military strategy. For more than a thousand years, rulers and scholars across Asia consulted this book, The Art of War, as they plotted their military maneuvers and, and imperial conquests. Japanese samurai, for example, study it very closely. Historians say that the French Emperor Napoleon was the first Western leader to follow the teachings of the art of war. It was finally translated in English in 1905. Now, the war, art of war presents the basic principles of warfare and gives military leaders advice of how and when to fight. Its 13 chapters offer specific strategies for battle. My name is Brent Winfield, and I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, and this is the Advent message. War in the Church Friends, Satan has declared war on the church by the infiltration of false brethren. The evil spirit of Sambalat is to discourage us and to get us to quit when God has called us to do. This Sambalat driven mission is to thwart God's work. It's a judgmental, mocking, insidious spirit that comes in sheep's clothing. These false brethren may even offer to come alongside and help you, but their intentions are to tear you down, not build you up the figurative wall God is calling us to build. Listen to this. But there were false prophets also among the people, and there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destructions. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil, spoken of, and through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. 2 Peter 2, 1, 3. Usually, when we read this verse, many think that this only applies to other denominations, but Seventh-day Adventists are far from exempt. Now, next we can look at war and marriage. Just today, I read a sign that says straight people who want gays to stop being gays should stop having gay babies. Now, after reading this, I pondered a little. You see, the devil is cunningly saying that homosexuals cannot help being that way because they were born that way. This individual who wrote that is saying that babies are born gay. If this is true, then there is a mistake in the Bible. Hmm? And we know that there are no mistakes in God's holy word. The scriptures say in Leviticus 18.22, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. And then God prophesied this following. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one toward another. O oh, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Romans 1, 26-27 God does not make mistakes. The disgusting acts that gays indulge in are the devil's distortion of a beautiful act of love between a man and a woman who are married. This is an out and out act of war on humanity. Now let's look at war in mankind. Listen to this. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise governments 
presumptuous are they? Self-willed, they're not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption, and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness, as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are, and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own deceivings, while they feast with you, having eyes full of adultery, and that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls, and heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, Second Peter 2. And now finally, let's look at the war in the home. Friend, one of Satan's greatest victories have occurred in the homes of God's people. The wily one has cunningly brought into the home devices that captured the attention and imagination. Never before in the history of man has there been an all-out assault in the home of the Christian. Every home has a television. Most are equipped with services like Netflix or have TV service packages that include hundreds of different channels. After a hard day's work, mom and dad, along with the children, settle down to watch an evening of television. They have, within the convenient click of the remote, the latest Holly Weird movie, the latest sporting event which, where people hurt each other and fans jump up and down in delirious enjoyment. They watch violence, murder, and sex. They hear cussing and it washes over them without even a murmur. Mom enjoys watching reality shows like Dancing with the Stars or some soap opera. Do they still have those? And the kids are addicted to Xbox and Nintendo where they hunt and kill zombies to their heart's content. Yes, indeed, Satan has found a place in the home. The frightening thing is no one really sees him lurking in the shadows. If we but open our God-given spiritual eyesights, we'll easily recognize him fanning the flames of lust, anger, despondency, isolation, even alcohol and drugs plus many other weapons he'll use to hurt the family. Now, listen to this quotation from Ellen White as she prof prophesies what will happen in the last days. And you tell me whether or not these predictions are spot on. I quote, There is coming rapidly and surely an almost universal guilt upon the inhabitants of the cities because of the steady increase of determined wickedness. We are living in the midst of an epidemic of crime at which thoughtful, God-fearing men everywhere stand aghast. The corruption that prevails is beyond the power of the human pen to describe. Every day brings fresh revelations of political strife, bribery, and fraud. Every day brings a heart-sickening record of violence and lawlessness, of indifference to human suffering, of brutal, fiendish destruction of human life. Every day testifies to the increase of insanity, murder, and suicide. The cities of today are fast becoming like Sodom and Gomorrah. Holidays are numerous. The whirl of excitement and pleasure attracts thousands from the sober duties of life. The exciting sports, theater going, horse racing, gambling, liquor drinking, and reveling stimulate every passion to activity. The youth are swept away by the popular current. Those who learn to love amusement for its own sake open the door to a flood of temptations. 
They give themselves up to social gaiety and thoughtless mirth. They are led on from one form of dissipation to another until they lose both the desire and capacity for a life of usefulness. Their religious aspirations are chilled. Their spiritual life is darkened. All the nobler faculties of the soul, all that link man with the spiritual world, are debased. See Testimonies for the Church, Volume 9, page 89. Friend, this woman lived in the 1800s, and she's writing as though she's living in this 21st century. It's amazing how accurate is her prophecy. You see, the art of winning the war from the third angel where he says, Jesus placed a parchment in the angel's hand, and as he descended to earth in majesty and power, he proclaimed a fearful warning, the most terrible threatening ever born to man. This message was designed to put the children of God upon their guard and show them the hour of temptation and anguish that was before them. Said the angel, they will be brought into close combat with the beast and his image. Their only hope of eternal life is to remain steadfast. Although their lives are at stake, yet they must hold fast the truth." End quote. Great Controversy, Chapter 28. O oh, Saint of God, we have our own Art of War book. It was not written by Sun Tzu, but by the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This book, that is freely available to everyone, teaches the ultimate formula to gain the victory over the ultimate enemy. It's called God's War Book. First of all, pray pray and pray some more. Get accustomed to spending time on your knees. Next, study, study and study some more. Get accustomed to being in the Word. Don't just read but study the Bible. And then share and share and share some more. Get accustomed to telling others about the love of Jesus and His three angels message. That's how you win the war. This is the art of war from God's point of view, not Sun Tzu. The Bible teaches us how to be victorious in the battle for our lives. If we closely follow its instructions and follow our general, we will be triumphant. We will at last have mastered the art of war. Let us pray. Holy One of Israel, there's a war going on. The devil and his angels are attacking the people of God. But Lord, we know we will win the war with Jesus Christ, our general, at the head. Help us to follow our general, Jesus Christ, as he leads us victorious against the war of the enemy. I thank you for us spending this little time with you. Now bless us now, please. Forgive our every sin, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, friend, thank you, Lord. thank you very much for visiting with me. Always remember that God loves you. Yes, He really, really does love you. <laughs>